Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a black-white zombies deck. The vote was actually tied with our previous black-green extra lands deck, so it just goes to show that every single vote matters. And if you want to be part of the voting process, you can always head on over to patreon.com forward slash legendvd and get access to a bunch of cool perks, like access to our awesome Discord community, you can get access to all my tier lists for limited, and of course you can vote for every single poll including this one. So for now we're taking a look at a black-white zombie stack which got a few new additions with Amonkhet Remastered and one of them is a Wayward Servant, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two zombie saying whenever another zombie enters a battlefield under our control each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. And we also have access to Corpse Knight, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two zombie knight saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control each opponent loses one life. So we now have 8 of these zombies that can drain the opponent whenever we play a creature which means we can potentially even win the game without ever needing needing to attack, and we also have other ways of draining the opponent with Liliana Untouched by Death using the plus one ability, and then eventually Gem Palm Polluter which can cycle for two mana and then target player loses life equal to the number of zombies on the battlefield, including the opponent's zombies, so this used to be even better when Field of the Dead was still around. And being able to win the game without ever needing to attack does have its perks, let's say you're facing a goblin stack and the opponent has an active Krenko mob boss generating goblin tokens, then it's going to be very difficult for your zombie to actually connect with the opponent, but instead if we can drain the opponent out with our Corpse Knight, a Wayward Servant and Jump on Polluter, we can potentially win the game before the opponent amasses an overwhelming force of goblin tokens to kill us. So that's one of the advantages of this build as opposed to the classic maybe mono black build that also plays a few of the three mana lords to pump up our zombies, which of course isn't all that useful if we're not even planning to attack in the first place. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana, of course, we need to have Crib Breaker. This might be one of the best zombies in Historic. As a one mana, one one, that for two mana we can tap and then discard a card to make a two two black zombie creature token. But the most important part is we can tap three untapped zombies we control to draw a card and lose one life. And of course, we can offset the life loss as well thanks to our Wayward Servant now. And then we also have two copies of Dreadwander, another card from Amonkhet Remastered, a one mana, two one, a zombie jackal, but the downside is that it enters the battlefield tapped, so we can't use it with the Crib Breaker's ability right away. And then for two and a black, we can return Dreadwander from our graveyard to the battlefield, but we can only use this at sorcery speed and only if we have one or fewer cards in hand. Then we also have the full playset of Falmar Knight, one mana for a 1-1 one -one, Death Touch, a zombie. And then we can also use the Adventure first for two and a black, letting us draw a card and lose one life at instant speed. So having a 1-1 one -one Death Touch means we've got a nice defensive creature to hold off any opposing attackers. And then in the meantime we can build up our giant army of zombies to eventually drain the opponent to death. And then we also have the full playset of Stitcher Supplier, one mana for a 1-1 one -one zombie that when it enters the battlefield or dies, mills the top three cards. And we don't have a ton of graveyard synergy in this deck, but milling is definitely beneficial for us, as we can potentially hit a Dread Wanderer, we can fill the graveyard for Liliana Untouched by Death, and we can also fuel our Timurid Calls of Death to make sure we have plenty of creatures to exile. And then at two mana, besides our Servant and Corpse Knight, we also have two copies of Lazotep Reaver, which is a great follow-up to a turn one Crib Breaker, as we get to make a 1-2 zombie alongside a 1-1 zombie token, so we can tap three zombies on turn two to draw a card right away. Now the downside of multiple Lazotep Reavers is that if we amass with an existing zombie army token in play, we will have to place a plus one counter on the original zombie token instead of making a new zombie, so that's not going to trigger any additional Corpse Knight servants, and we won't have an extra token to maybe tap with Crib Breaker, so that's why we only have the two copies of Lazotep Reaver instead of the full playset. But if we can somehow chum block with the 1 1 token or sacrifice it some other way, then the second Reaver is still going to be quite good. And then at 3 mana we also have the full playset of Timurid Calls a Dead, which is an important piece of the puzzle, an enchantment saga that on the first two chapters mills the top three cards of our library, and then we can exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So if we do mill an additional copy of Timurid Calls a Dead, we want to exile that first, since we still have additional uses for creatures in the graveyard, but if we do have to exile a creature, the first one we want to exile is Gem Palm Polluter, since it's pretty expensive to replay with Liliana's minus 3 Ability. 
And then on the third chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control. So we're gaining a ton of life, which is useful to offset the life loss from Crib Breaker. And we also get to scry X, so we can set up our next draws, which means we can potentially try and dig for a jump on polluter, which is often the best way for us to close out the game once we have a ton of zombies in play. And if we have a Crib Breaker on the battlefield, we can potentially draw into the cards we kept on top with the scry from Timurt Calls a Dead to close out the game right away. And then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Liliana Untouched by Death, which is also the primary removal spell in the deck. We can use the minus 2 ability, and then target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of zombies we control. So that once again highlights the importance of having plenty of cheap zombies on the battlefield, which is why we have so many 1 drops and 2 drops in the deck, instead of focusing on the more expensive and powerful 3 mana lords. Then the plus one mills the top three cards of our library, and if at least one zombie card is milled this way, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life. And the plus one ability also sets up our minus three, where we can cast zombie cards from our graveyard this turn. So we often won't be able to use the minus three right away, since we need mana to cast those zombies from the graveyard. But it also once again highlights the importance of having lots of one mana zombies, so we can get the maximum value from the minus three from Liliana. So we can potentially play Liliana on turn four, use the minus three on turn five, and then cast a whole bunch of cheap zombies, including maybe some Wayward Servants and Corpse Knights, to drain the opponent out. And then last but not least, our Jump on Polluter, which is often the way we close out the game, by cycling it and making the opponent lose life equal to the number of zombies on the battlefield. And once again, this includes opposing zombies. So if you're playing the zombie mirror match somehow, this is going to be one of your best tools available. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. We have as many black sources as possible, since we have so many black one drops that we don't want to miss out on. And we only have 12 white sources, but we also get to play with unclaimed territory, since all the white cards in the deck are zombies. So unclaimed territory can help us tap for white mana for those two zombies as well. And then we've got four chapels, four godless shrine, 10 swamps, and then two Frexian towers, which are also great at making extra mana alongside maybe the zombie token from Lazo Tap Reaver, or we can sacrifice a stitcher supplier to put more cards in the graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Not an exciting hand, we're missing Crib Breaker to make this a good hand, but I think I'm still keeping. We've got lands, we've got spells, and we've got a Jump Palm to maybe help us close out the game. Lead with a Stitcher Supplier, in case we want to adventure the Falmar Knight first. Nothing on turn two from our opponents. I do want to play the Wayward Servant first. That way, if we play Lazotep Reaver, we get to drain for two. Opponent cycles a neutralize, so looking like a blue white or maybe banned control deck with Uro. So we can expect a decent amount of sweepers, so Liliana's going to be important to resolve. For now we can hit for 3, and then I can either Adventure Falmar Knight or play Lazadep Reaver. I think I'm gonna go for the Adventure here. Opponent passes. Alright, Crib Breaker, definitely one we want to resolve. So let's start by attacking. My opponent could have a Shark Typhoon here, I guess. So maybe I should try and see if they have a response here. Alright, that resolves. And then I probably just cycle the Jump Palm here. Since I don't expect to have more than four zombies for the remainder of this game. And then if they cycle a 2-2 Shark Typhoon here, they can eat a Supplier or trade for Servant, but that's fine. Yep. And then I'll cycle the Gem Palm. And since we actually trade it, we can still keep chipping in with these small creatures until they eventually decide to tap out for a sweeper. Sorry, hurry. Okay, 
All right, so they've got two mana up. Could be Dovin's Veto, in which case I don't want to go for Liliana. Otherwise, Liliana would be a pretty strong play here. And next turn, my opponent could play Sweeper and have a counter spell up. So I think I start by playing Liliana, see if it resolves. It does. Well, plus. And then I do want to attack Teferi, I think, so if they minus on Liliana and play Sweeper, they won't have a Teferi in play anymore. And then we'll play the Falmer Knights. Might get censored. And does not. They did have a sensor in hand, so glad I sequenced it this way. Let's skip to the good part. And a wrath. Alright, so they didn't get rid of my Liliana, so I might be able to do some damage with the minus three now. At least that's the hope. Before they can uh, escape Uru and gain more life. Uh oh. It's gonna be a search for a Skanta. Alright. I was afraid my opponent maybe had a cast out. So I've got six mana to spend. And yeah, plenty of zombies in the graveyard. Best my opponent can do is cast Sensor. If I manage to drain him for two with the plus, put him to four, then there's also a chance I could just kill them with a servant in hand, but I think this is a good spot for the minus. And then we'll play uh, Servant Firsts. They don't seem to have a response. So play another Servants. And then I can play Reaver, which will drain them for quite a bit here. Seems good. Their points at one. Now they will be able to escape an Uro, but they're gonna have a hard time casting both a Wrath and escaping Uro, and we've got an extra Servant in hand. Cycle Sensor. Gross Spiral. To ferry pluses. We need to move quickly. Plays a castle, cast a wrath. All right, they seem pretty dead now. Can just plus Liliana. And we hit a zombie, and that's game. All right, definitely a close one here. Some tricky sequencing when we wanted to deploy our Liliana. And luckily, Dovin's Veto is not a very popular card, in best of one at least, because goblins don't play any non-creature spells, so I don't expect too many banned decks to have Dovin's Veto in the main deck. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, an acceptable hand. Turn 1 Crypt Breaker makes a lot of hands a lot more keepable. And we even drew the turn to Lazadab Reaver, so we can draw a card right away. Unless my Crypt Breaker gets shocked here. And then next turn, play Timurt Calls the Dead. They maybe wanted to kill the Crypt Breaker before I get the chance to activate it. Turn to Thermal Alchemists. I think the sequence thing still works out better if I play Timurt Calls the Dead here. Let's attack first. And then we'll get rid of another Timurt Calls the Dead. 
keep those actual creatures in the graveyard for Liliana. Gutter snipe, all right, it's pretty scary. Don't have a lot of answers, so our best bet is to eventually find a Liliana. For now, we'll get rid of Crib Breaker. And I did draw another Crib Breaker, so it might be better for me to start drawing instead of playing double Servants. So let's play Servant plus Crib Breaker. And then probably, okay, just playing the Falmer Knights. And then end of turn, I'm probably drawing once again with the Crib Breaker's ability. We've got a lot of zombies in play now for the third chapter, so if we find a Jump on Polluter, that represents a ton of damage. Although we're about to take a ton of damage here as well. Finds Shock and Electrostatic Field. Alright, let's activate Crib Breaker in response here. And then probably keep Falmar Knight untapped. Ooh, Liliana's a great draw. Opponent passes, another Wayward Servant. And there's Jump Palm Polluter. Now I won't be able to draw into the Jump Palm right away. But that's probably fine. So my plan, if I'm keeping the Jump Palm on top, is to just play Double Servant here. Otherwise, I could also play Liliana and then mill the uh, top three cards. And then I don't want to put Jump Palm on top. I guess that's also reasonable. Or I could just Liliana minus kill the Gutter Snipe. Maybe that's even safer. Alright, let's do that. Keep Jump Palm on top. And then just play Liliana, kill Gutter Snipe. What is more precious than life? You're outnumbered. And then we'll send in everyone. And then next turn, between the Servants and the Polluter, we should be able to close out the game. Another Gutter Snipe. And Shock takes out Liliana, that's fine. Servant number two. And cycle jump on. And that'll do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly missing white mana. This is better. And I'll probably have to bottom the jump on polluter here since we kind of need all three zombies to go with the crib breaker. Although we could always use the ability on Crib Breaker to make more zombies as well. Aha, uh -huh, Aegis Turtle. So the high toughness, high alert deck, which means we want to find Falmar Knight probably as one of our key zombies in this matchup. And then for now. Probably still play Crib Breaker in case we draw a Lazard of Reaver on turn 2. And then we can go Servant into maybe Knight plus Supplier. Opponent passes. Wanderer comes into play tapped, so I wouldn't be able to draw. So we'll just play Servants. And pass a turn back.
So they must have kept a pretty creature light hand here. Gauntlets of lights. Alright, so that's gonna hit me for seven. Alright, do I want to draw cards? I guess I can hit for two, still activate my Crib Breaker. Maybe chump with the Stitcher Supplier while we can. In before my opponent plays a Tetsuko. And yep, there's Tetsuko, so no blocking allowed anymore. So we don't have a lot of time here to find an answer. Our best bet is to just kill the opponent before they kill us. I mean, Servant and Knight can attack to get in two damage. I can play two more zombies. Can maybe activate Crib Breaker in the hopes of finding like a Jump Palm. Maybe I should activate Crib Breaker first in case I find another Servant or Corpse Knight. So I think I attack for four here. Opponent can prevent two. Opponent takes it because they don't want to risk Tetsuko. Probably makes it more likely that they can just win the game next turn. But so be it. And then for now we'll play Crib Breaker. So I can go up to nine if I play Dread Wanderer. The problem, I guess, comes when I try and draw a card. I'm going to lose one life. And Tetsuko itself is also unblockable, so I'm at least taking 8. So yeah, I can't really afford to draw main phase, so I just have to play Dread Wanderer using my Unclaimed Territory, and then I can still make a zombie with Crib Breaker. And then I guess draw a card with the ability, maybe. But they might have a pump spell here to close out the game. And yep, there it is. Ages of the Heavens, plus 7 toughness. So let's see what we would have drawn. We could have made an extra zombie. Would have drawn a jump palm. So after our opponent took 4 damage from 13 down to 9, we should have just played our 2 1 mana zombies using unclaimed territory. We would have drained the opponent for 4, putting them to 5, and then we can just pass a turn with double swamp untapped, and if they do indeed present a lethal pump spell, we can always try to draw with our crit breaker in response, and if we draw into the jump pump looter, we can still win the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what do we think of this? It's not great, at least there's a bit of synergy between the Suppliers and Timurt Calls the Dead, as we'll have a nice full graveyard. And then hopefully the Scry from Timurt Calls the Dead can find some good cards. I guess we'll try it. I do get to curve out nicely, at least. And then if we ever find Liliana Untouched by Death, we'll have a very full graveyard to use the minus three with. Can maybe find a Dread Wanderer along the way as well. All right, there's Liliana, that's nice. Let's see what we're up against. So far, mono black. And no thought sees. And we'll get rid of a Timur it calls the dead. Which gets disfigured. Fair enough, at least it means there's no sweeper incoming. 
get rid of another Timur to cause the dead. Play Liliana. And then we can plus and next turn maybe minus. You can kneel if you like. Sadly hit three lands so we don't get to drain the opponent for two. It's gonna be a Solemn Simulacrum. Ramping the opponent. So it's a Cabal Strongholds mono black deck, so maybe ramping up to Ugin. So that's gonna be a scary card to face. For now, we did draw Polluters, so that's nice. So is my plan to minus three Liliana this turn, or do I go Reaver plus Cycle Jump Palm? I don't hate just plusing Liliana one more turn and then milling these three cards, and then I'll have another Liliana in case I can answer the first one. Into the grave with you. Play Reaver, make sure to keep up double black. Cycle Jump Palm. And attack with all. And then between Liliana plusing the other Liliana in my hands and our board presence, we should be able to close out the game. So, get to mill a ton of cards. I guess worst case scenario, they have a Sorcerer Spyglass in hand and shut down Liliana, but let's see here. I can just plus Liliana to maybe kill them. Or I can minus and then go Corpse Knights or Wayward Servant into a Reaver, but then if they have a two mana spot removal spell, they're not dead, so I think I'm better off just plussing twice in case this one doesn't work out. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Sadly, double chapel in our opening hand. So they both come into play tapped. This hand would have been pretty decent if we actually had an untapped land, but I think I got a mulligan this. Alright, this is better. So what am I keeping? Maybe I can afford to bottom Phyrexian Tower and just hope to draw a third land. Sure. And if we fail to draw land, I can still play another Corpse Knight on turn 3. Hopefully draw land by turn 4. Dreadhorde Arcanist shows up. Thanks, Elder Jump on. And we can maybe double block if they don't have a burn spell. It's gotta be an odd list for now. So, Blue Red Wizards. And yeah, this can represent a lot of damage next turn. Don't have a Liliana to get rid of her. So we'll play Corpse Knights, and I'm probably better off cycling the Jump Palm right away so they can't kill one of my zombies in response. And this is also zombie, so that's nice. Bone takes five. And then, do I bother attacking? Yeah, I guess we can get two damage in. Alright, this is probably gonna hurt, but at least we got to cycle the jump palm and put our opponent to 10. And then hopefully Timurt calls it dead, can find us some more goodies. Although, I won't have any corpse knights left.
so we're taking 11. Liliana was an excellent draw, and I'll keep Servant on top. So I could also mill the Servant. I think I'm better off just killing Adelis. And then we'll hit for four. And next turn I can play Servants and return Dread Wonder to drain for one. They might not be able to kill Liliana here, unless they've got another Adelis. Am I just dead now? Five, six, seven? Not quite. But they will be able to take out Liliana, but then they might die on the way back. I guess I can only deal five. Four from my attack step, and then one from Servant getting back Wander. So now the question is... Can I afford to even attack? Maybe I can afford to attack with one zombie token, put them to three. I mean, if they have any burn spell, I'm pretty much dead. The fact that Arcanist tramples probably means I need to keep back at least four toughness. But if I don't attack with a single zombie, then I'm probably not even killing them next turn. All right, let's see if we're dead. Any two damage burn spell will do it, since they can flash it back and hit us with Adelis. Stormkin plus any instance will do it too. Alright, GG's. Close one. We needed our opponent to take two damage of a shock land, maybe, and then we could have won. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty slow hand, but it is powerful in the sense that we have double Corpse Knight with Reaver, which is a good combo, and a Gem Palm as well. Ideally, we can draw one drop at some point. And we're up against goblins. So we'll have to dodge Muxus. Gonna be a goblin trash master. All right, I guess I'll take ten. And then I'm happily chum blocking with the reaver and the token. And then next turn we might be able to close out the game with another Reaver plus Polluter. Opponent passes. Yeah, I think we got this one. And we'll close out the game with a Gem Palm Polluter. Sweet, so maybe not a typical Goblins list, which don't usually play Goblin Trashmaster, but yeah, that's usually how we want to close out the game. 
try and drain the opponent to death even if they're hiding behind a wall of goblin tokens. Alright, so we got to see the deck in action in a variety of matchups. Overall, I wouldn't rate the deck particularly highly. It was definitely better positioned when Field of the Dead was still in the metagame and you could just win the game with a single jump on polluter at times. But it's definitely still a fun deck if you're into the whole zombie theme and you like draining people to death. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.